After two months of waiting, my special Japanese imported wires have arrived. These are the Sun Hayato TTW200 and TTW203 test wires. What's special about them is their ends. These ends can be inserted into PCB through holes and make a strong electromechanical connection. Let's have a closer look at the TTW203 wire under a microscope. On the left is the special connector. It's shaped like a shovel that can be compressed to fit through tight spaces. As a test, I'll plug it into some unpopulated serial holes on this Seed Wio light board. Under the microscope, we can see how the connector works as I slowly push it in. The shuffle-like tip resists being pushed in until enough force is provided. Once it's in, the narrow body of the connector touches two sides of the plated through hole. The wide tip of the connector then blocks removal unless you provide enough force. Let's look at the hole for damage. This will be easy because the board is filthy. We can see that the connector has disrupted the grime in the hole, however it hasn't cut into any of the plating. While we're looking at the hole under the microscope, let's try inserting the wire again. From this angle it becomes clear that the connector is compressed and doesn't dig into the surrounding plating. Wiggling and moving the connector only compresses and decompresses the connector, it doesn't damage the board. I bring this up because other solderless designs like press fit headers will dig into the surrounding plating. This can damage the board if it's not designed to handle this type of connection. This also means the Sun Hayato wires will not work without through hole plating. Thankfully this seems to be rare on most modern boards, but it's something to watch out for. Looking at a used and unused connector, I don't see any major wear. Continuing the test, I connected three TTW203 wires. These are PCB to male breadboard wires. In my case, I'll be connecting them on three adjacent holes, TX, RX, and ground. They fit next to each other without issue. I connected them to my FTDI TTL232R 3v3 USB to serial cable. And it worked. I was able to get a correct serial readout from the board. Next I tested the continuity of the connector while wiggling it and placing strain on the connection. I found that it's able to handle being pulled in various horizontal directions just fine but it will disconnect if the connector is pulled up or away from the hole. In practice, this means that the connector can handle wires being bent or routed without any trouble. I measured the wire's resistance using my TC1 component tester. Its resistance is 0.04 ohms, which is pretty good for a breadboard wire. Using my NPS1601 power supply, I ran one then three amps directly through the wire without much trouble. I inserted and removed a connector a hundred times and found no visible or mechanical wear. Next I attempted to insert the PCB connector into a female hole on my breadboard. I was tempted to do this because the wires come in packs of 10 and I currently don't have any use for my TTW200 PCB to PCB connectors. Unfortunately these connectors don't seem to be consistently held by the breadboard holes. Even worse, inserting a connector may even be detrimental and loosen the breadboard hole's grip on future breadboard wires. I don't have any hard evidence for this, as after insertion both a good and loose breadboard hole look the same to me. Even stranger, inserting the PCB connector again works this time and makes a solid connection. The connector I pushed into the hole doesn't appear to be damaged from any of this. Finally, I forcibly bent the end of the connector using my tweezers. In regular use this shouldn't happen, unless you try really hard to move the connector itself horizontally while it's half inserted. More likely this would happen if you stepped on the wires or crushed them somehow. Even after that abuse, the wires don't look too bad compared to working ones. Maybe they could still be used? Overall, I'm very excited about these wires. They make it much easier for breadboarding components that would traditionally require soldering pin headers. The only downside of these wires is that as of recording, you can only buy these in Japan or by proxy using a service like Zen Market. I hope by producing this video it will encourage international distribution of this product. That's all. I hope you all have a good day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.